Hi, this is Tommy Smothers with No Brothers saying, whenever I'm around, I listen to Ken Barron's show on WJBC, Wibjik Radio, Fun Radio with Ken Barron. Turn on this show. How in the hell did you get that? <laughs> I, we we interviewed uh, Tommy a couple different times on the show. So. Oh, so you work with so Tommy's him. been here, huh? Well, he's been to town, but uh, that was over the over the phone when we did that. Oh, and, uh, I wanted to play that because I know that boy, uh, that surprised hell out of me. Yeah, <laughs> Tommy and I go back to uh, <laughs> Lord before his uh, comedy hour show. Yeah, Gene Farmer yes. is in studio. Welcome right. back to Bloomington. <laughs> and uh, Tom O'Connell is here, too. You're back for the reunion as well? That's correct. Mm-hmm. So both of you guys are uh, really products of ISSCS. ISS. Formerly called the Orphans Home. Yeah. Although we're not orphans. Yeah. We're going to find out more about these guys. And, uh, more. When was the last time either one of you was back in Bloomington Normal? I was here in 88. Okay. And it's been, well, that's not so long ago, but that's been a while. Mm-hmm. I don't know. When did I run away? <laughs> <laughs> 1945, I think. Yeah. Has it been that long since you've been back to Bloomington? Day 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 World War uh, II was over. Wow. I uh, I left. Well, the town has changed a little bit since You liberated yourself, too, right? Yeah, really, really. (laughs) (laughs) The town has changed just a tad since then. You know, to tell you the truth, uh, I didn't get off the home grounds enough to really... See the towns, so it could be. It could have looked like this in 1945, for all I know. Come to think, you were a campus kid then. You stayed right on. Yeah, campus. we uh, well, we got out to go to the the movie house on uh, in Normal. normal. Okay. Somebody told me they restored that. They did. It's beautiful. The Normal Theater. God, I have to go sneak in again. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way we can go to the movie back then. Good luck. I think you'll see a James Bond picture this weekend. They yeah. bring back some some of the others. Yeah, we thought we had it down to an arch. You know, you would uh, kind of pretend you're looking at the coming attractions, and when the guy's head was turned, you just slip in the door. Mm-hmm. But come to think of it, we couldn't pull that week after week after week after week. <laughs> he had to know. <laughs> Gene Farmer is um, is a gentleman who's back for the uh, reunion that takes place this weekend. But what an interesting career you You've had. You've uh, been a staff writer for Real People. That was the most recent one, I guess. Yeah, that's right? my re- most recent. Uh, Laughing. Laughing, yeah. Smothers Brothers Comedy Come Hour. Are. Sanford and Son. Chico and the Man. And Good Times. Good Times. And a bunch more that. Uh, you just didn't want to list? Oh, that. Uh, great, unrightfully so. Says Nick, for example, the stuff you know, <laughs> They died quick deaths. <laughs> well, most shows do, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Anymore, I think they showed thirty-five new shows. I saw. I heard a story oh, yeah, yeah, last weekend. They, yeah. Thirty-five new shows, and they asked them what they thought of them. And they liked two of them, and then, then, then they said, uh, "We'd rather watch I Love Lucy." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that says. Well, than, it it shows that the oldies are still goodies. I think so. Yeah, I did a in fact. One of uh, a big compliment I have is uh, they. I finally got to be a, a producer. I produced a show called That's My Mama. We got it on the air. We took it through a couple of seasons. Was that is, with uh, Carol Burnett's? Uh... No, that was with uh, Teresa Merritt and Clifton Davis. It was a black show. Oh, okay. It came right. It was uh, right against uh, when Good Times was there. Oh, okay. So they had stolen our Black Thunder. So we didn't. Uh, we just we just made it funny. Okay. But, but but again, it lasted a couple of seasons, which is more than most of them do. Yeah. Remember Amos and Andy? Do I remember Sanford and Son? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you were family? Oh, Amos and Andy. They, the, to me, those are the funniest guys ever, and they still are. I still have their tapes. They're, uh, well, Freeman Gosden and Charles Carell did right. it on radio. Yeah. And they did it for years. Two white guys doing this in, radio show, which stayed uh-huh. on. And it was hilarious. It, it was, was. A funny show. And then it was they, it was very positive for blacks, I think. I think it was. Poor but, people struggling. Yeah. Which is how I did Stan Sanford. Just... Poor. I didn't think black. I think poor. The ironic thing was, though, they finally made a TV show out of it. Hal Roach Studios turned yeah. out this TV show using black actors who were doing characters yeah, that were created, created by, by white, two yeah. white guys. <laughs> and their voices, the every all the mannerisms, I couldn't tell the difference if I was watching the show or listening to the no, radio. You can't. I thought they did such a terrific job. It's to their credit. They were wonderful actors. And then all of a sudden we became sensitive. And they took the show yeah. off. And yeah, so every- all they wind up doing is unemploying fine black actors yeah. portraying a couple of bumblers. But and, there were also blacks on the show who were And showing how poor people overcome their problems, which to me there's more humor in that than, uh, yeah. like, Friends, for example, the show it's on now. They just, 
I don't know, sit around making sexual innuendos, which to me isn't isn't fun. It doesn't make me laugh. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, the whole but, but but Amos and Andy and Sanford and Son, still Chico and the Man, still make me laugh. I'd, I'd ask you some questions about Red Fox, but uh, I don't know. Well, if well Red's gone. I can say anything yeah. about him now. <laughs> <laughs> he was. He grew up in uh, in uh, in really a rough situation. He was poor himself, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. And um, worked in. He worked all the, the most risque manner you could think of. Right, right? and all the, the toilet club. clubs that you can think of, because that's what you did. Uh, yeah. Back then. But they they cast him in the show, and of course it was uh, a family show. <laughs> yeah, right. At one time they had him, I think in St. Louis somewhere, <laughs> they had him come and speak or something. Well, every other word, <laughs> red hunters Careful is now. a swear word. I'm not going to say it. But <laughs> they, they'd kick me off there. <laughs> they were very embarrassed. Yeah. It, it wasn't over the air. They were just a you know, live auditorium, but uh, people were not uh, pleased. Uh, yeah. But that's red. And when he do the audience warm-ups for the Sanford and Son, same thing. It would shock them. Yeah. But put them in a good mood, too. <laughs> One of those censors had to have their hands on the button oh, all yeah, the time. Oh, yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just reminded of an old Stan Freeberg recording of uh, Elderly Man River, because we were talking about politically correct. Instead of yeah. Old Man River, it oh, was, oh. <laughs> was I'm sorry, some of our audience members may find that word old offensive, so you better change it. <laughs> Elderly Man River. <laughs> and the buzzer's going off all the time. <laughs> Well, you know, even at Disneyland uh, today, when you go to the you know, the Songs of America, mm -hmm. it's, uh, oh, what the heck is that? They tell, Oh, yeah, the it's, it's it's summer. It used to be the summer, the, the darkies are gay. Mm -hmm. It's summer, the old folks are gay. So Disney changed it. Wait, this is years and years and years I ago. don't remember that song at all. Yeah, but... Stephen Foster. Beautiful song. Okay. But politically correct again. Sure, no. sure. Not as good a story as yours, Ken, but uh, <laughs> tell another. I'm uh, not doing more. so good with Disney. <laughs> <laughs> now they're changing other things because, uh, you know, it's hard It's hard to find a character that uh, I think Disney is being uh, oh, yeah. sued by somebody now for, uh, I can't remember what it was. It was. Uh, oh, well, they're being sued now because they uh, let their employees uh, have... Uh, it's, it's a gay marriage. They pay benefits to uh, uh, single-sex partners. Uh, okay, now that's not even, I was just story-wise, though. Uh, I think it's got something to do with Aladdin. Remember they made them change the lyric, if they don't like your face, they'll cut off your oh. ear if they don't like your face. They made them change the yeah, lyric. Yeah, oh, they, yeah, I didn't. I, I think that's really that. that really happened in the world, you know. Oh, it did. And in fact, Aladdin, they didn't put it on uh, nationally, national uh, mm -hmm. theaters. They mm -hmm. went straight to video cassette. And changed it when it came out uh, yeah, in the video. But, oh, well. Oh, it's a very sensitive world we live in, Ken. Be careful. Thank Be careful. God for people like you. Yes. Keep it up. Say a swear word. Thank goodness, <laughs> thank goodness for all those, all those lawyers out there that are <laughs> keeping, keeping things busy. Oh, God love them. 13 before 10 at WJBC. It's uh, 11 minutes in front of 10 at WJBC. Our weather word calls for cloudy skies and warm conditions with a high of 85. Cloudy tonight, low 64. I don't think I've ever really had a chance to talk in any great length to somebody who wrote for um, shows. Were, were they all different? I mean, to me, laughing probably was the fastest pace of all the, the all the shows. Right. One joke after another, right? We had, like, from 13 to 17 writers on laugh In. And to show you the insanity of the business, we uh, there was a segment in the show called the cocktail party where oh yeah da -da 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 -da, then they said hey uh, Dan uh, whatever <clears throat> and all seventeen writers put in the room and you stay there all day writing that little two minute spot but that's how you got uh, yeah. But then, then it always change the damn line. So, <laughs> I mean, there was an insanity there. Yeah. But laughing was the most. It looked zany off the wall, mm -hmm. and that. But it's wild, very structured. Oh, so structured! You can't believe every word chiseled to yeah. its spot. Did they do that with a live audience when they? Filmed oh it? yeah, yeah. It was a, a very. It, it wasn't a. Uh, well, it was live. Anybody can come in. There were always people there laughing mm -hmm. at that, but. Uh, uh, they didn't pay any attention to them. Yeah. They would tape all this stuff and over tape and uh, and everything. then a lot of editing because they'd be working it. Oh, everything was editing. You might on see the Nixon show. on there. You might see yeah, anybody dropping right. in to do a line. And on any Sock show. Sock it to me. I think was oh yeah, the, the Nixon's phrase. line. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it's incredible. Um, how in the world did you go from ISSCS, oh, growing up in normal, <laughs> to, uh, is this a long story? I mean, yeah, so yeah. How, how many hours do we have? To, <laughs> how, how, no, does one, how, does, how does one, and how, how did you wind, why don't we just tell the whole story here? In fact, we could talk to both of you guys. Gene Farmer, by the way, is in studio, so is Tom O'Connell. Oh, we're, we're pushing the uh, ISSCS uh, reunion. reunion Sunday. Mm-hmm. I after I don't be Gene. So. That's a Paragon Ballroom or something. Okay, I don't know if it's too late for people to sign up. I think it is at this point because they had a, but had a number. I imagine if uh, any homers come, they'll be certainly welcome. Yeah. And if they don't have the initiative, it was what ten bucks. Uh, Tom, Tom will Tom will pay their fare. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got this call from uh, Arizona after I talked to you. Then I got a call from no kidding. Kansas. Yes, somebody got on the wire and they said, "Hey, give them a call. Let them know that all these guys are going to come back. So you're going to have I don't know how many people there." Yeah, well, uh, I talked to one of the organizers, Jackie Neal. Uh, last night, and she said there was a uh, 180 so far, and they're still coming in from all over. Same thing. So your uh, your plug <laughs> generated. I didn't know they got you in all these cities. Well, they don't. They don't. But they were just on the phone saying, "Why don't you call in?" It happened. I think it was last Saturday. I was working. I was getting oh. all kinds of calls from people who just, you know, well, were out out across the country, and they said, "Call WJBC." And if for some reason, people knew the call letters, and yeah. you know, they knew we were here. So, well, well that kind of uh, that's sort of uh, paralleled uh, when Mike Royko. I wrote a letter to him. He was on the subject of orphanages, mm-hmm. and he uh, uh, printed it. And it went, his column goes all over the United States. Sure. And they mentioned well, I was from Montague, uh, California, and so every I was hearing from people all over America. Yeah. Letters. They just write it to me and Carol Montague. Kids. Get all there. kids, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You did write an interesting thing. Uh, and 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 there, what the what the Homers did in their lives was just knock me out. You know. Mm-hmm. God, we have lawyers, engineers, uh, every profession, uh, college professors. PhDs. T- PhDs, Pi Beta Kappas, you name it, we got it. Uh. And TV writers. TV writers. Uh, uh, here's, here's, but he's PhD with that. Isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Tom, well, I have a public habit. Tom, what do you do? Uh, I'm retired now, but I was a uh, U.S. Treasury agent uh, for ATF, retired from there. The ATF, okay. And then I, you weren't down in Waco. No, I was retired at that. But time. he knows how to do it. <laughs> yeah. He knows how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you amounted to something. Yeah. Then I be- after that, I became a pro officer, and I retired from that. Yeah. Uh, tell, tell him. Tell him what Danny does. Oh, my brother Danny. Uh, you know, Ryder Trucks. He became vice president of uh, Ryder Trucks. And he was an ISSES too. Right. Yeah. And he was he became an attorney and uh, lobbyist in Congress. And uh, but there's. A lot of success stories. Just amazing, you know, yeah. how well they've done. The school started, I think, in 1865. The right. Civil War ended. Mm-hmm. That is correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And th- they needed a home for people who was lost hosp- their fathers, I guess, in the Civil War. Yeah, it was a hospital uh, originally. It was on land donated by Jesse Fell. And you know who uh, Fell's lawyer was? At Abe Lincoln. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess <laughs> so we, we have an Abe Lincoln connection there. <laughs> you didn't know that. No, didn't you? I know yeah. all kinds of stuff. I talk to people, Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> and Jesse Fell, I believe, found it normal. I mean, he yeah, was, yeah, he was a great big philan- local philanthropist. And, uh, and so that it started out. A philanderer after, or a philanthropist? Uh, uh, probably both. Who knows, Bo? Oh, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> But it's incredible when you think about how long it's been around. And then, of course, it, 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 I think it ended in the 70s, maybe by 1975. Yeah, I think they roughly. Yeah, it was it. sold in 1980, I know. Yeah. Uh, I want to get your views on this. We'll save this for next half hour. But uh, there's been a lot of criticism of orphanages. And uh, and it was it's, it's a bad word. And it's, uh, hey, oh, boy, let me get into that. I'm, well, <laughs> I'm, well, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> we'll touch on this in a minute. Five and a half in front of ten at WJBC. Let me break for this. If um, you have plans to um, to go to the ISSCS reunion uh, this weekend, I think you're going to have a good time. It ought to be just a... And they've had a few of them before, I think. This isn't yeah, I the understand. first reunion. This, isn't the first yeah. one. this is our first one. Yeah. yeah. My first one, anyway. Yeah. I haven't seen these guys in 50 years. Yeah. I haven't seen you in longer than that. Yeah. In fact, I just <laughs> laid eyes yeah, you on go, you. We go back a lifetime if we're not seeing each other. <laughs> Went to different schools together. 829-2345 or 1-800-322-9377 will get you in. Uh, I'm going to break for a commercial or two. We're going to continue. Gene Farmer is in studio, and uh, so is Tom O'Connell. And maybe you want to talk with these guys. Feel free to give us a call. Sure. 
Let's take a look to the uh, birthday list before we uh, forget about it completely. Uh, Nick Kyoto is on the list. So is Casey Hackelman, who turns six. Angie Hubley is our winner this morning. She winds up with lunch for two at Phil's Bar and Grill. She calls our switchboard before two this afternoon at 829-1221. Happy birthday, Angie. Who else is on the list? Oh, uh, Helen Loper and Bunny Maxwell, Laura Miller, Eula Quinn, Kelly Rodas, Bud Sampson, Jack Schrader, Joshua Schuler, Rob Schultz, Larry Simpson, Rod Spillman, Rob Stevens, Sadie Umland, Callie Whitehouse, Donald Williams, Jamie Wilson, and Dick Witzig. Anniversary people include Ken and Diane Barrick, Dean and Pam Eckhart, Mike and Patty Geske, 16 years together. Number 55 for Lawrence and Ruth Gard, Lois and Willis Martin, and Bruce and Ellen Reeder. Congratulations to you folks on uh, your big day. Gene, you were born in Farmer City, weren't you? No. Uh, oh, okay. I got I that wrong. I was born in Patterson, Illinois. Patterson, Illinois. Yeah. So Why did I, I, where did I read something about Farmer City? Oh, I know. The other guy we're going to have on. Ah. Later on to the the uh, book writer. I'm getting confused. Oh, he's a Farmer City. John huh? Kramer was born. That was named after me. In uh, sure. Farmer City. And I was thinking George Rock, you know, of uh, Spike Jones fame, was from uh, Farmer City. But you didn't work with him at all. No, I don't. No. Uh, it had been before your time. Yeah. Yeah. It's about a minute and a half in front of 10 at WJVC. There is a Farmer City. It's still there. And Gene Farmer. See, I was thinking Farmer, Farmer, yeah, farm, yeah. City. I would have named uh, mine Farmer Metropolis, not City. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't tell us in a minute. Should we save this? Let's okay. do this for, uh, we'll so, find out whatever. how you wound up from ISSCS. And Just sitting here in front of you. Yeah. Okay. Because it's an Are you ready? No, I'll, we're not going to have time because we're going to join the network. But let me just okay. tell you, you have a couple of albums to your credit, a couple of uh, comedy albums. Yeah, that's one of my, my performing days. Uh, and uh, About 10 years. Calypso Gene on the scene? Yeah, you, that was... What a, did you do, play guitar? Yeah, and, I played guitar, and that was a Calypso Review of 1972, which shows you how far back that was. Well, that's not that long ago. Oh, the 70s were just like last year, weren't they? Strangely, uh, yeah. <laughs> strangely enough, the, the things we talked about and, and the jokes in that album are alive today. <clears throat> yeah? And uh, what was the other? The Integration of Lodi. The Integration of Lodi. That was... Uh, 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 the, Today it would be very politically incorrect. Back then it was probably politically incorrect too. <laughs> <laughs> but you wound up you wound up performing that where at a convention? Yeah, that was the, the integration of Lodi was integrating into this small town. They didn't have any you know minorities of any kind, so we imported them and that kind of stuff. And that uh, and one of the lines was uh, all we. Uh, Pollocks were trying to integrate, but we couldn't let them swim down by the lake because we'd like to practice what we preach, but they kept leaving rings around the beach. Ooh. And we heard <laughs> we heard from the Polish legations, oh, the I ambassador of Poland. I bet you did. Hang on a minute. WJBC Bloomington is where you're tuned. It's 10 o'clock in the morning, 73 degrees. I got in from the hour. Increasingly cloudy skies is uh, the word with warm temps, a high of 85. Tonight, cloudy, low 64, and then tomorrow, mostly cloudy and seasonal with a high of 80 degrees tomorrow. 74 right now at the uh, WJBC studios. When I was a kid, I knew in Veterans Parkway. Okay, 10.06 in the morning. I was talking about people from all over the country coming back for this reunion. Gene Farmer is here. He's a television writer who's written for uh, shows like The Smothers Brothers and Laugh-In and Real People and Sanford and Son and Tom O'Connell here who works for... Uh, uh, retired. Yeah, these guys are... Are you all retired? Oh, yeah, we're all retired. Well, yeah. writer never retires. Never want to be, but a lot Tom, of times writers. Tom's been retired all his life. You know? <laughs> at, full, at full pay, though. So. <laughs> yeah, he retired at full pay uh, at uh, okay. ATF. And Greg Ring is in Pittsburgh. Hi, Greg. How are you? I'm doing fine. Good. What do you do, Greg? Um, I, w I actually live in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm up here on a little trip today, but uh, oh, okay. I uh, own some subways in uh, West Tennessee and northern Mississippi. Oh, you mean like the sandwich thing? Yes, sir. You don't own anything under the street. That'd be a different Not quite yet. kind of subway. I own a municipality. I don't. <laughs> usually, people don't do that. Uh, Greg, you were at ISSCS one then. Well, I think I got there probably in '67. Okay. And I stayed there through uh, 1975. And, and that's when it closed, didn't it? Yeah, I think I left right before it closed. Okay. Um, and you own a string of subway sandwich uh, shops? Well, actually, um, I own the development rights for a territory. Um, you know, <laughs> Another Homer makes good. There you go. Bet your... You did, did, uh, Bippy. Did, did, <laughs> there's a Lampian phrase. Yeah. Right? <laughs> did, did you... Um, uh, what was I going to ask you, Greg? Well, what, what, what cottage were you in, Greg? Greg? Yeah. I'm sorry? What oh. cottage were you in? Well, I, when I started out, I went down to uh, Betsy Ross down in that area. Yeah. That's where I started. Yeah. That's in the village. We all started there. That's correct. And uh, and then I grew up and went to Boys Row, and uh, they started closing down Boys Row when I was there and ended up over in Girls Row. 
Yates Cottage. Hey, watch that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, more fun over there. Uh, <laughs> hey, this, this is ironic. When, I I talked to a guy, uh, uh, Walt Patton, in uh, old Roseville or something. I don't know about that. But he was... He helped build Boys Row. He learned his trade as a construction person. Rosemont, is that what you think? Rosemont, is that it? Maybe. Where the horizon? It's, it's close around. It's close yeah. to here. Okay. Uh, and, and anyway, Walt learned his trade by building Boys Row. And so now with uh, Greg there, he was uh, on there when they were tearing it down. So yeah. just it did came you call, full circle. Did you call yourself a homer? Is that is that a trade? Oh, yeah. Boy. Yeah, it was originally called the Orphan's Home. Okay. So you just call you Yeah, so everybody's... Is, everybody. uh, Called a homer. Have you heard that before, Greg? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, I ended up going to a normal community high school. I actually graduated from there, and I, I think I went there from a fr my freshman year, as opposed to the school that they had on campus. Mm -hmm. And anytime you're away from the home, and you, you, people know that you were from ISSCS, you always got called a homer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me. What do you think about the idea of orphanages in the country? Does that ring a, a, a positive note or a negative note with you, Greg? Absolutely, a positive note. Okay. With me, too, a positive note. Well, and I know with Gene, that's Oh, positive. boy, well, when you're ready to get into that, let me... <laughs> uh, yeah. Greg, it's great to talk to you. Well, uh, I'm sure these guys are going to have a... Hey, Greg, if you can make it up here Sunday, come on up. Well, I got this trip over here. My, my sister's called me. They live down in Centralia now, and uh, ah. they're super excited about this weekend, and uh, I just hope everyone has a good time. Hey, and you have done... You, uh, you're following the pattern of most homers that got out of ice and SCS. By golly... All of them did just great. They, they're in every trade and profession you can imagine. Not only in it, they excel at it. Yeah, and the potential for failure was probably greater. Coming oh, from yeah. well, the you, backgrounds that you guys did, right? Yeah, well, you left with uh, mainly your shirt on your back at 17, 18, and uh, that yeah. was it. No safety net. So you I'll, bet the, I'll bet the homers don't know the way to the unemployment office or the welfare office. I bet they, I bet they don't. Because you did it yourself. You had to, and so you did it. Is that right, Greg? Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Hey, listen, thanks for calling in. You're more than welcome. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um, ten minutes after 10 o'clock. All the sensitivity. Orphanages have this picture of yeah. gloom and yeah, doom. Victorian we've, day, we've seen it Dixonian. portrayed in the H.O. Annie. Right. You know. uh, is that the way it was at ISSC? Yeah? Well, you saw, the, there's, you know, there's a universal truth. There's very few universal truths. One of them is that people always feel sorry for kids who grow up in an orphanage. Personally, I kind of felt sorry for people who didn't grow up in an orphanage. They, uh, out there, you had, you had uh, they say, well, oh, God, I didn't know where to start. Well, you had a family out yeah, there. He said you didn't have a father and mother, though. But, uh, no, but you had a house, right. house mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, you had a whole cottage full of friends. Uh, you, you had a family of friends, basically. And the whole orphanage was, well, you, you know, cottages of friends you know mm -hmm. your college was your immediate family now maybe not or not all orphanages were they probably as good oh i would imagine they they aren't but uh ours if, was if you ran it like isscs was you think mm, that would be oh, a, a yeah. plus to have around today well it would be more than a plus i think it was a small uh i'm not the village we live in a, a small town mm -hmm. uh we had uh all, everyone lived in cottages 15 to 25 oh you had uh Schools there. You had a gymnasium, uh, swimming pool. They had a farm that grew the food. A power plant for the power. A bakery to bake the. Did they rule it bread. with an iron hand? Well, it was disciplined. I, structured, really. Yeah, structured. it was structured. But I don't know. You grew up in it, and uh, you knew the rules, and you violated them at your peril, which you usually did. But uh, mm -hmm. you, you paid, you know. What the would price. what would, what would punishment be? Did they? Did oh, it they, depends on what you did, and did it depends spank? on who was trying to punish you. Did they spank? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's bank. <laughs> but you know, every, see, if you get if you get if you screw up, you know, I get uh, called into Miss Pollock. You know, she was the substitute house officer. You can con her into thinking she punished you. You know, because <laughs> every time before she'd slap you, her right hand would start to tremble. And, you, know. <laughs> now, you, you wrote to Royco, and Royco was doing a uh, doing a piece on on orphanages and this whole business of the sensitivity that orphanages are, are cruel places and you can't have uh, kids yeah, in situations. He, uh, foster homes are much more. Oh. Uh, conducive, right? I mean, that was the thinking. Talk to what's, people. What's the difference here? How do you guys see it? Well, uh, I, I've never been in a foster home, so I don't know, but I've talked to people who have, and uh, it's worse. In a foster home, you never fit in. You, you just never fit in. I, I can give you an example. My brother and sister left the home, and they went to foster homes, and they went to very nice foster homes, mm -hmm. nice people, but they said they would rather have stayed at the home with their friends. They 
they weren't equal in the false yeah. trouble. Yeah. Alcohol. Without the home, you're equal. Yeah, yeah. everybody. And everybody treated the same. Fair. I mean, the rules, everybody. Well, is this is this a right uh, assumption? Uh, it's possible for, and I'm not trying to paint all well. I'm not trying to put down welfare people, okay? All right. Hmm. But I, it's possible, and I'm sure it goes on. Uh, welfare mother gets a certain amount of money for having a child right. from the government. Hmm, I can increase my income here if I have another child. Yeah. And another one, and another one, and another one, and all of a sudden you have this gigantic... Yeah. I don't think it's that conscious a thought. I think you it, don't they, think they, so? No. I think they have one, and then they, they're they sexually promiscuous, so they have another. That's the reason. Not to, uh, think, But okay. they will take the government grant. Yeah. You know, but are those, are those kids getting the money for food, or, no, is, it, or no. is it in some cases being used for I think the, other the, things? The money goes to these... Uh, Young, healthy, able-bodied, unwed mothers of children. You don't, how do you, see? Unlike an orphanage, which is centralized, you can audit an orphanage. You know exactly where every penny is going. Mm-hmm. But when you send millions of uh, individuals around the country, you have no idea what's going on. And logically, you would figure that if a person has screwed up their own lives and their parents' lives, the chances are they're going to screw up their kids' lives, not enhance it. Mm-hmm. But those are the ones you send the money to. And I think as long as you perpetuate that system, you're never going to get them to give up their kid for a better life in an orphanage because that kid is a paycheck. And I think people have their... They're, they're so selfish these days. Uh, back in our day, the parents, especially the immigrant parents, they would do anything for their kids. Their kids were the center of their lives. You would give up your kids for a better life, which they did. Is that what happened in your case? Uh no, I think uh, we were sent there by the courts because my, f- my mother died, my father was a drunkard, mm. and couldn't provide. So rather than, you know, skip from, uh, and I think uh, none of the relatives had any, you know, they couldn't provide either. Yeah. What was so your far. relationship between your dad after you, between you and your dad well, after you were? Well, out so. there, well, you know, oh. you're still your father, but you didn't, uh, you didn't see him, you know, so uh, in, in name, yes. Mm-hmm. Did you, do you know what happened to him? Did you just stay in contact oh. with him or not? No. Oh, for a while, uh, I had, uh, you know, other relatives down in uh, southern Illinois. Yeah. And uh, he was staying there with them, and I stayed there a while, and then joined the Marine Corps. And after that, no, I didn't. I uh, haven't seen any of them since then. Because I, I had, okay. I had so more in common with I had more in common with Tom O'Connell and my friends than I have with my um, real family. So Yeah. I didn't stay in contact with Tom <laughs> that often, you know. Yeah. Well, about once every 20 years we'd get together or something. But uh. Maybe we'll get some uh, some phone calls here from people. This is uh, quite interesting. And I, it kind of flies in the face of oh, uh, current of, thinking. Of, yeah, of, of Hillary's spin on it anyway, which, uh, which is what started the Royco article. Okay. 10.15 in the morning at WJBC. There's a reunion for ISS Homers. Uh, this weekend, yes, Sunday, and uh, here are a couple of people. Tom's from Pennsylvania, right? South, uh, southwestern Pennsylvania, and um, we have a gentleman here from California who wrote for oh, little shows like Laugh In and uh, The Smothers Brothers and uh, Sanford and Son, Chico and the Man, Man, Good Times. You have some great credentials. Yeah, they were fun shows too. Whew. It's ten sixty. I want to ask you more about the Smothers Brothers and okay. stuff like that. When we continue, or eight two nine two three four five gets you in, or one eight hundred three two two nine three seven seven. It's uh, ten eighteen in the morning at it's WJBC. Oh, it is. Uh, good morning, Art. Hi. When I was a kid, I grew up around Western Avenue Community Center, and we used to go out to ISS and CS and play them in basketball all the time, and love to go out there. Who won? <laughs> Who? Games. I think one of the smartest kids ever met in my life was out there, a kid named Tony Spitaro. I don't know. Oh, uh, Tony. Tony's coming you know in Tony, town. Huh? Yeah. Great guy, Ph.D., uh, Fantastic guy, one of the smartest guys I've ever met in my life. In he fact, did, I think Tony is the one who's probably been calling these people yeah. in different parts of the country. T- Tony yeah. not only got his uh, PhD, he got a post uh, doctoral fellowship to the uh, uh, Northwestern School of Medicine too. Yeah. Will he be in town this weekend? Yeah. Where are you guys see, to meet? Well, let's see. It's the uh, is it the Paragon? The Paragon Ballroom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'd sure like to see him. He's a gr- he's a great guy, and he. he he, he followed the route a lot of he did, going into the Marine Corps. And, yep. Worked his way through college. Oh, yeah. Really? Ca- person. Well, yeah. maybe if you stand outside yeah. and look hungry, they'll take the <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, You see, the thing is uh, that uh, uh, when we, uh, 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 Tony was on Dewey Cottage, and when uh, 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 Tom and I were in Roth, 
we on Roth, we always thought the dumb guys went to Dewey. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they got more PhDs than Roth got. <laughs> that, that's an insult. <laughs> okay. Did you have anything else to add to this? <laughs> if you guys get a chance, you ought to go out, to, out there now. I've got a buddy who bought one of those cottages and remodeled it into a home. And boy, it's something. It's oh, I'd love to see it. Hey, by the way, I was going to ask you, had you stopped by to see that? We're, we're going to after this okay. get together here. He's the furthest uh, north cottage on the on the left side. Cantigny. That's Cantigny. That's our old cottage. That's yeah. where we left. I left from there. That's a fantastic home. What, what's his name, Art? Uh, Jim. He, he's uh, over at uh, Mayall Plumbing. He's in the phone book. Just ask for Jim. But boy, he's done a fantastic job uh, remodeling that place. That, mm. Oh, I'm I so glad I went to home. somebody who took care of it. Yeah. Looks like a million dollar home. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. Well, what, what was your last name, Art? My name is Foreman. Foreman, okay. So mention your name and uh, you know, let us have Roth. And we'll... Well, I've met a lot of fantastic <laughs> people from my SSCS, a lot of good relationships over the years. Oh, they're great people. Have what? a good weekend. Okay, hey, thanks, thanks Art. Thank you. Audrey, good morning. Hi. How are you? I'm pretty good. What can we do for you? I just wanted to tell the guys that I lived out there. When? Uh, from 46 to... Uh, We've got to know her. We've got to know her. What's your last name? Willen. Willen? Willen. I don't think you <clears throat> know me. I uh, I left in 48. You did? I left in 58. But, well, you were young then. We, we were se- segregated well, by how many, age. How many people lived there one time? How many? When I first went there, there was About 800. About 850. 800 wow. when I first went there. Okay. 800 when you lived there? When I first went there. Yeah, it kind of slacked off. Yeah. Well, listen, are you going to go to the reunion? Can't afford it. They're charging you. Yeah, well, it's only about 10 bucks. I say Tom will pay your fare. <laughs> I think if you, if you if you showed up, we, we will manage to sneak you in there, Audrey, really. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Just tell me. Yeah, you know. mind that. Tell, you, tell me you're my guest. Oh, by the way, you said that they spanked you when you were out there. They didn't us. They oh. weren't allowed to. Oh, yeah. oh, they were probably more enlightened. <laughs> Well, well, if you were, oh, oh, hell, Johnny Rogers, he, he, he's he's got me a few times. uh, But I he he got fired for that, did he? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's not mention any names. Oh, okay. (laughs) Well, he's dead anyway. This Pollock's dead. All right. Listen, thanks. Uh, Okay. Bye. Bye. Uh, Jim. Good morning. Hey. Can. Yes. Don't believe a word these bums you got for guests. <laughs> okay, who's this? They're all lying. Are they really? Them kids were bad. <laughs> hey, I worked there. Oh, you did? Rotten kids. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, I'm not joking. It was the most fun I ever had in my life working there. Even kids were great. And I was a teamster, and I'd drive everything but a lawnmower or the bulldozer, but one Every morning there'd be kids that'd be late to get to school. They'd miss the bus. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to drive them to school. I got in the car one day, picked them up in front of the office building, and one of the boys in the back seat all at once, wham, took his book and whammed me on top of the head, about knocked me. Well, I seen stars. I jumped out of the car, threw him out of the car and his books in the yard, and I left. Uh, I got back to the to the school after taking the kids to their school and boy was I in trouble the assistant superintendent seen me do it <laughs> you weren't supposed to let him out huh? I wasn't supposed to let him no. no. now what's your name? not there hey glad to hear your program and glad to hear from your guest okay Jim Haig? Jim Cruz oh Cruz, Cruz. right okay and you worked there and... up until 67 oh okay well these oh, that's about the time they were closing yeah and a brother-in-law that were engineers there yeah. At the power house. Uh, uh, Jim, uh, uh, let, me, let me ask you this. Uh, I understand that it was right around the late 60s that they, the court started dumping the problem kids and the mentally ill kids out there. And they all needed special treatment, which is one of the reasons the home folded, because they didn't treat it as an orphanage. They treated it as a dumping ground, it's more like a reform school. Hmm. So I can understand some guy knocking you in the head. Oh, come on. And if you were if you were smart, you would have knocked him in the head too. Really great. Be like old Johnny Rogers, my guy. He'll respect you. You can't you can't do that anymore though, right? Your hands are tied to do that kind I of stuff. I got yeah. You, you Thanks get, for calling, Jim. Sure. Okay. Um, Which is probably a reason orphanages wouldn't work anymore. Well, uh, even in school, the cool school system. Yeah. I mean, discipline, uh, corporal punishment. Phew, oh, but boy. you need it. I, it. I don't know. Not in school, even the family. You know, you're. Oh, yeah, be sometimes, yeah, Parents could be arrested. Yeah. 
Uh, WJBC, good morning. Anybody here? Ken, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Ron Snyder here. I was out there from uh, 1945 till 1953. I live here in town. I'll be out there at the reunion uh, Sunday. Really looking forward. Okay, do you know Gene? Ron, let's see. You know, I, I think I'll probably... Uh, you were when you were in the village. You said you were in Miss Vincent's cottage. Yeah, That's Roth right. cottage. Well, I was in uh, Miss Ward's cottage there, Washington. Washington. Yeah, with Miss Dreyer there too as substitute. Dyer, yeah. Dyer, Dyer, Dyer yeah. <laughs> Hazel Dyer is the person that probably kept everybody sane out there. <laughs> you know, in our cottage. Well, it sounds like Gene did everything to fight that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, yeah, that was right next to Roth. We we yeah. had rock right. fights. Remember? <laughs> you bet. Yeah, <laughs> you guys and Roth were supposed to be the tough guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dewey was a smart guy, as it turned out. <laughs> we were all supposed to be the weenies or something. Yeah. This is, is this Ron? Is that what we're talking to? Yeah. Okay. Would you agree what, uh, with what Tom and, and uh, Gene have said here about the uh, about the home? Do you feel that, that yeah, it's... Some of it, and, you know, I had some, uh, i got to tell you, I had some really great experiences out there, and there's a lot of it I really think a lot about. But there were some bad times out there. You know, there's... For instance? Oh... I got beat with dishes, baseball bats, fruit sticks. Uh, so it's kind of like the military, or uh... we we had we had some cottage parents that shouldn't have, you know today they would have been weeded out would not have been there. Uh, did you did you have it coming when you were? Uh, you know I I can't tell you that I didn't. I mean I was I was a rotten kid. Yeah, uh, I can't see Miss Dyer beating anybody. Ms. Dyer did not. Miss Dyer was as I say Miss Dyer. We're, it's Hazel Dyer. Yeah. She's nice. About. Who, who was the main house officer there? That it was, was uh, Faye Ward. Ward. Faye, Wo- Faye yeah. Ward. Yeah. Faye but, Ron, if you hadn't been there. I think there... we threw rocks at her, too. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, Ron, if, Ron, if you hadn't been there, how would your life have been different? You know, I don't know. I I have problems with that, thinking about it. My, my mo- mother and father live here in town. Uh, don't get, I uh, don't get along with my mother at all. My dad and I are, you know, good friends and uh Mm-hmm. Uh, we're we're father and son, but uh, I have a lot of problems with a uh, with a uh, with the reasons I was there for one yeah. thing, and why, you know thinking that I shouldn't have been there, uh, but you know I was so. Yeah, I think. Well, what what? How old were you when you went in, Ron? I was there. I went there when I was six years old. Six years old. Well, no, that's dad that's took not. Me out. My dad took me out of there when I was a sophomore in high school. See, Tom and I, when we, we went in, we were about, oh, two or three years old, so we knew no other life. And I knew, now I knew Mr. Rogers, and, you know, I say anything about but he was, I liked him. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I liked him, too. Don't get me wrong. I was, uh, one of the, I was one of the kids, I don't know if you were out there or knew anything about it, but. There were three of us that went to Chicago and got the Ferris wheel. Do you remember the Ferris wheel? Oh, I yeah, we took they took us there too. Okay, I was one of the three that went to the Chicago to get that Ferris wheel and brought it back to Assasi. Oh, I don't remember that. Me I thought, neither. I don't remember. No, no we went to Brookfield the 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 park up there. Brookfield uh, Zoo. Well, we yeah. had a Ferris wheel. Brookfield Zoo, and there was a park. Uh, yeah. So, something River Park or okay. oh Riverview. River, Riverview, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We had a Ferris wheel out at the home. It was a small one, Gene. It was up in the. It was well, it was small as small as. I'll tell you how small it was. It was up in the uh, top story of the gym. You remember the balcony? Oh, yeah. No, I don't remember I don't that. remember the first well. But, okay. Yeah. I remember going. The, 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 we looked forward to the big trip to Chicago to stay with the Legionnaires who sponsored yeah. Roth. Well, and I was in the Sons of the American Legion drill team for the ISS. Oh, yeah. yeah. We went hey, up to Riverview in March. I hate to break this up, but we've got a break for the news. Uh, you have a great time when you get together with these guys this weekend, okay? Hey, we will. Okay, we'll see you, Ron. Thanks, Ron. See you. Uh, 1028, man, I'm way behind spot-wise, but uh, we'll continue in just a moment. Oh, the time flies by so fast here. We're on to 1030. We have news coming your way a little bit late right after this. It's uh, 21 minutes in front of 11 at WJBC. We have some uh, in-studio guests. It turned out to be a really busy morning today, which is okay. It really is. We have uh, Gene Farmer, who is a writer for, staff writer for Real People, Laugh-In, Smothers Brothers, Sanford and Son, Chico and the Man and Good Times, and and uh, Tom O'Connell, another uh, uh, product, another Homer from ISSCS is here. He's with the uh, firearm tobacco. Alcohol, tobacco firearm. Alcohol, yeah. ATF. ATF, yes. Thank Waco. <laughs> <laughs> what a combination of things to put together, though. Alcohol, firearms, and tobacco. It's like, well, that's are, a dangerous combination right there, isn't it? Well, the, uh, the uh, people don't know it, but the ATF, that is the... 
actually the premier law enforcement agency. They do the dirty work. They get out in the field and do it. They chase the yeah. the bad guys. The FBI sits around with computers, you know, and runs profiles and arrests some guy based on his profile. And but so if you need help, you call them and say, "What wine goes with a 45? Yeah, uh, <laughs> red or white? Uh, <laughs> well, the, the political correctness will compromise on a nice brown." <laughs> <laughs> it's 20, 20 minutes in front of 11 at WJBC. We were talking about writers, and you worked with uh, with a bunch of them uh, oh, yeah. on some of these shows. Yeah. But there was a team that I said, did you ever hear of a guy by the name of Seaman Jacobs? They call him yeah, Cy yeah. Jacobs. Yeah, and, and Fe uh, Fred Fox. Fred Fox, they worked, worked together as yeah. a team. They're, they're, they're the, one of the premier uh, sitcom writing teams. Yeah, and uh, Jacobs wrote for Bob Hope. and Yeah, probably George Burns. People and, like uh, that. Burns relays the story in, in the last book he wrote, and it's a very funny story about Seaman Jacobs and Fred Fox, uh, who uh, would work together, and then they'd read the script, and Seaman Jacobs would always let Fred Fox read the script, but he always stuttered. He could hardly hardly read. And at one point, I think Jordan says to him, "Why don't you let Why don't you let Cy read?" And Cy said he needs the practice. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, great story, great story. But that's not that's not even the topper to it. The whole thing is at one point he got really involved in the script and he read the whole thing perfectly. And George said I said to him, I said, Do you realize that you read that entire page without stuttering? And he said, My God, I'm c c c c cured. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> Sounds like a story they might have written. Yeah, it, maybe, I mean, it, uh, good maybe he embellished top that a little bit. like that, I'll tell you. There's, <laughs> Gene Farmer's in studio, so is Tom, and we're going to have another gentleman joining us. In fact, he's coming in the studio already. John, I don't know if you want to get in here or jump in, but John's written a new book, and uh, boy, it's a good one. I was reading it um, all about it, a modern-day Western, really, the setback uh, quite a few years ago, but it's it's nice to see somebody working on Westerns that are that are different. So we'll get into that. Where were we? Uh, where were we with all this stuff? I was going to ask you about. Um, as long as you're here, Gene, I was going to ask you about writing. What, what what was the best time for you? What show would, did you work on that you really enjoyed? Oh, I enjoyed all of them. It's, it's hard to put a uh, thing on there. I <laughs> I. I was always so grateful just to be working. I never thought, if I, yeah. am I having a good time or not? I have a good time no matter what happens. You never answered the question. I want to break for a commercial because okay. I'm way behind. How in the world did you get from ISSCS okay, well, yeah, well, to, yeah. to the point where you're writing for some of the top TV shows of their time? All right. Okay, just a moment. Hello there. This is 14 minutes in front of 11 at uh, WJBC. Back with uh, our guests right after this. 13 before 11 at WJBC. Down. Okay. Up, up. Gene's yeah. taking notes here so he can get a hold of this book. <laughs> <laughs> it's a zoo around here, folks, oh. but it's great. I can't. Yeah. I wish every show was this much fun. You know, he's a real lion tamer. I tell you, <laughs> <laughs> got a bunch of pussy cats here. Anyway. <laughs> no, it's it's great visiting with you guys, and uh, and it's great to see the adoration you had for a, for an institution that obviously doesn't exist anymore, but it does in your hearts. Oh yeah, and all so. of them feel the same way. Really, it's. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Back to this question. Okay. How did Gene Farmer get to the point where he was traveling around? You you sent me some stuff, man. You were doing, you were doing nightclubs all over the country at one time. Yeah. Comedy albums, playing the guitar. Yeah. And, Norman uh, didn't have any, so I didn't stop here. <laughs> yeah. But uh, then you, what was what happened? Well, it's uh, serendipity. Uh, you know, I just kind of stumble. I left the home in 1945. Uh, I ran away uh, <laughs> just for. A guy bet me a quarter. Donahue, Jack Donahue bet me a quarter. I couldn't do it. So it didn't occur to me, Donahue. You know, if Boy, if I ran right. away, I could I had no way to collect. So Don, smart guy, this guy. <laughs> Donahue still still owes me a quarter, my guy. Yeah. And anyway, so you, then You I, really did run away from the home. Yeah. I had uh, 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 a relative, sister and brother down south. And uh, I went down there, stayed a couple years. Tommy came down to visit me and ran across a wonderful world of... Outhouses and no oh running God. water mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. So then I ran away again. <laughs> I went down to St. Louis to work on the river boats. I yeah. was 16 at the time, and uh, that's when not uh, entertaining either. I bet. Huh? Oh no, no. I, I, you I, were working. Oh, working. Yeah. Now oh, yeah, working. Yeah, this working. is where you stayed. Loading, out. unloading, and uh, I slept in a. I, oh, well, I finally slept on the boat. Uh, Tom, Tom recalls the. Well, I'll tell you, he slept in flop houses, I guess. Yeah. He had a choice where they could 
for a dime, he could share a cot with somebody else, another stew bum. <laughs> or he could get a quarter for his own. He says, I paid a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Big spender. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, after a week there, the uh, uh, the boat was going down Maybe I don't want to know this whole story. And I wanted to go on it. <laughs> And the guy, I was, I was only 16, you know, mm-hmm. I said, well, I got, I'm 18, the birth certificate's coming, hell, he'll be there when we get back, blah, 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 but he wouldn't. So I, then I hitchhiked to uh, Peoria and joined the Marine Corps. Okay. I just turned 17. Okay. And then so four years in the Marine Corps, I have signed for three, Korea came along, they <laughs> extended me a year, and I went to uh, Korea, Incheon, up to Chosen, back, stabilized, and I came home. Then I went, uh, uh, I got two years from the GI Bill for that one year in Korea. Mm-hmm. So I went to uh, uh, college for uh, non-degree work. See, I finished Marine Corps in uh, the Marine, high school in the Marine Corps because I had did not uh, in uh, no civilian right. life. So I couldn't get in college. So I went to a non-degree for two years. And then I did good enough that I was able to convince them to uh, put me in. So you had ambition, though. Oh, yeah. The, the guy gave me a test. says, I fall right in the category of people who will go two years and drop out. Mm-hmm. So four years later, I walked in <laughs> waving my Pi Beta Kappa key, yeah. and I found out that son of a gun had left after two years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so then I got a scholarship to Stanford and got my master's there, and, uh, and all along here, I had been, I learned to play the Marine, uh, guitar in the Marine Corps. Right. And so I'd play at different parties, and I could never remember the lyrics, so I had to make up my own. And I eventually had a whole bunch of uh, funny songs, and... Uh, so that's what you did when you traveled around. Yeah, Tom tells about the time we were in Berkeley. Yeah, that, uh, but out in California, they have an all cow weekend, and each campus sends a some entertainment. Mm-hmm. Well, Gene was at Davis, and he represented Davis. And these <laughs> cow these, college, yeah, these uh, audience, these students were cruel. To these these acts, oh, they would boo them and everything. And I was thinking, oh, Gene's going to come on and get killed. They're going to kill him. Yeah. And they cheered. He was the only guy they cheered, you know? And so you figured so I saw he, a star was born. Yeah, yeah so he had to have something going for him. Uh-huh. Yeah. You worked at the Purple Onion? Yeah, yeah. somebody told me to, uh, why don't you go audition at the uh, Purple Onion? So I did, and uh, the Smothers were there, and uh, they were going to Texas for a week, so I, they hired me to fill in for the Smothers. Yeah. Did you so, know McClane Stevenson? Because Stevenson worked no, for the I did. Smothers. No, I never did know, uh, know him. Okay. He came uh, the year after I left uh Okay, he was a writer yeah, for, for real. A while. I left for real people. Yeah. Was any of the writing ever like it was on the old Dick Van Dyke show with Morty Amsterdam and Rosemary? You know, sitting around in a room. Oh and... yeah, yeah. The, oh, a lot, a lot of that goes on. You know, you'd write in teams. You'd be in a big room and you'd uh, back with the wise cracks going on. The writers' meetings were funnier than anything that's ever on the air. Oh, I bet. Especially the laugh-in uh, writers. Oh God, I wish I had tapes of them. Yeah, but you think about it. Uh, how many writers were working on a show? Maybe it would be a half-hour show on once a week, and yet you'd have maybe yeah, well, like five, on, six writers? On the Smothers, we had a two, four, let's see, me and Jerry Music, and so, about three teams of uh, writers. Lorenzo Music, was that? Yeah, yeah, he was my writing partner on uh, Smothers Brothers. Okay. It was Jerry Music then, now he's Lorenzo. Because some swami told him that he should start his name with an L. And he was Carlton the Doorman, wasn't he's he? He Carlton the Doorman on Ronda, yeah. Or uh, Rhoda. Rhoda, Rhoda. Rhoda? And, then he, and he's, also he's, did Garfield the cat? Yeah, he's the voice of Garfield. Sure. He was a great character on Carlton. <laughs> he's going, hey, Carlton, your door message. <laughs> hey, Carlton, so and so there. He says, uh, 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 give me a dollar and I'll tell you. He says, no, yeah. no, go to, give, give me a bottle of wine and I'll tell you. I'm not giving you a bottle of wine, I'll give you a dollar. He says, good, I'll buy two bottles. <laughs> <laughs> great, great, yeah. great character. And of course, he's on the uh, new Stan Freeberg United States of America volume, too. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I voice. didn't even know that, but it yeah. wouldn't surprise me. It's uh, great having you here. It really is. I wish we had more time, but we're going to run out. i got a market update. Uh, have a great reunion at ISSCS. I hope we get to... Hey, thank you, Ken. You, you be, you've been really fantastic. Well, it's great yeah. to visit with you, and I hope we get to uh, talk again down the road. Who knows? Who knows? Who yeah. knows? Tom, it's great hey, to you're, see you. You're, great, you're a great it's interviewer. Great to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know. Have, we have no control over the show today, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll continue. you're welcome to stick around if yeah, you want. Don't, uh, don't it, run out of here. We can it, hear about John's book if you want. Ball. Here. Aren't you Seven call? minutes in front oh, of yeah. 11 yeah. at WJBC. That's uh, Gene Farmer, yeah, Tom O'Connor. Cracking that wet noodle. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> ISSCS reunion uh, this weekend at the Paragon Ballroom. I think you had to have your reservations in, but who knows? Hey, there may be some people sneaking in.